Good afternoon, and welcome to the on-record portion of the Rockbridge Report. I'm Finley Merritt, and joining us today is Sam Krickenberger from the Office of Community Development. Sam, thanks for coming today. You're welcome. My first question for you is, can you describe a little bit about your job position? What, what does it entail? I'm Director of Community Development, so I'm responsible for planning, zoning, subdivision laws. Uh, the mapping office is under me, and we're now doing economic development in the county. So how did you get involved in local government? Uh, sort of a mistake. Uh, many years ago, I went back to grad school, changed careers. Uh, I actually have a master's in landscape architecture, and at the time when I graduated, they had just ch uh, passed Chesapeake Bay Act. So a lot of localities were looking for folks with uh, backgrounds in environmental planning and land use and uh, water law, which I had studied extensively in grad school and ended up applying for a job as a planning director in the eastern part of the state. And uh, 25 years later, I'm still in local government. So is that something that interested you and that kind of made you apply for that? It, it did. It was a job opportunity, I have to tell you at the time, but uh, very interested in it, uh, very diverse type of job. It's different every day that you go in. so kind of stuck with it. <laughs> um, the county recently amended its zoning ordinance to allow residents to have up to six chickens on their property. Do you anticipate other proposals to allow farm animals in residential neighborhoods? I never really know what to expect, though I'm hoping that's not the case. There's a tremendous wave of folks that are trying to be more self-sufficient, doing their own gardening. Uh, having your own laying hens has certainly been a part of that. A lot of localities have looked at this issue over the years. A lot of cities have actually always allowed a certain number of livestock on property. So, um, you know, I wasn't really surprised. This started as an enforcement action, and I just gave the landowner an opportunity to talk to the Planning Commission to see if they'd consider amending the ordinance, and here we are. We now allow uh, six laying hens uh, in residential areas in the county. So do you think that ties in with the movement towards local farming? Very much so, very mm -hmm. much so. And like I said, we, we're all trying to be a little more self-sufficient. We tried to start doing this back in the 70s and then forgot ourselves, and now with all the current issues hitting us, we're sort of reawakening again. Um, I know that the county just cleared the way to build a bottling plant for Devil's Backbone Brewery. Right. What impact do you think that will have on the county? I think that's got a real positive impact. Uh, the property they're building on out near the Bowling Alley has been owned by the county for a number of years. We're getting no taxation off of it. It's uh, the kind of business that's going to attract tourism into the county besides the revenue from wholesale and retail sales. They're making about a half a million dollar, no I'm sorry, about a five million dollar investment between equipment and the building on the property which we'll get tax revenue from. Uh, we think it's a great opportunity for the farm community to step up and look, to try some value-added crops such as uh, hops and grains. The brewery would like to buy as much local product as they can, so we see a lot of opportunity with the brewery out here besides good local tasty beer. So would that mean jobs for the county then? Yeah, we have a performance agreement with them. You know, essentially we're, we're giving them the property in exchange for of guaranteed tax revenue and uh, the creation of at least 10 jobs in five years. Uh, we've sort of lowballed that. We really think that, uh, you know, if they're successful, which they appear to be, they've won a number of awards with their brews that uh, we're hoping will get up to about 30 jobs. I know it's a, a bottling plant, so what distinguishes that from a, the brewery restaurant? The only, the only difference is the matter of scale. They'll, they'll be a brewery, but they'll also be bottling and distributing from the location up and down the valley. Uh, they won't have a restaurant at this point in time, though we're, we're hoping they'll expand to that. They're in a business zone, so they could expand. Uh, they will have a tasting room, so you'll be able to go in and sample the different brews and walk away with either a growler or a six-pack. What is a growler? Growler is a, a jug of beer. It's usually about 64 ounces. Uh, it's really green. You, you keep your bottle, you take it back, refill it. When it's empty, you go back so there's no waste in it. 
So it's also eco-friendly. Very eco-friendly, <laughs> very eco-friendly. And if agriculture plays a big role in the county. Um, it has Rockbridge Vineyards and Raffine and Asian Pear Farms in the county. What role do you see agritourism playing in the county's future economic development? Uh, we're actually looking at that in a big way. Uh, the Central Shenandoah Planning District Commission is actually trying to get a grant right now to study uh, agritourism up and down the valley, uh, set up a website and sort of a clearing house for folks that come to the area and are interested in the different venues. Um, so over the next year, we're going to really take a hard look at that and see what our opportunity is, see what the farm community uh, or how they support this. You know, a lot of farmers don't really like the public on their property, but there are a lot of other farmers out there that are doing markets, corn mazes, and pumpkin patches, and anything they can think of to uh, generate revenue. So we think it's a lot of opportunity, and I think the brewery fits in with that quite well. Mm -hmm. So can you expand a little bit on the opportunities that this might bring to, say, local farmers? or uh, It depends on if they step, you're talking about the brewery or agritourism? Agritourism or both. <laughs> it, it depends on uh, their initiative, really. You know, if they want to get into specialty crops, uh, they have an opportunity to do that with the brewery. Uh, one of the processes involved with the barley is malting of barley. The brewery wants to buy malted barley, so there's an opportunity for somebody to start a malting operation. Don't ask me what that involves. I'm not that familiar with it. But um, in terms of agritourism, you know, if folks are interested in putting in corn mazes or pick your own berries or pumpkins or any like, you know, we, we can give them a, a, a marketing tool uh, to help get more folks out there. What kind of marketing tool would? Well, if, if this all goes as we're thinking it may, we'd create a website. We'd link that with the uh, Lexington Tourism Office. And so when folks come in and check with tourism, they'll see that these other opportunities are out there around the county and hopefully take advantage of those too. The county has seen the addition of new businesses this year, such as Hetex America, um, that promised to add jobs to Rockbridge County. Right. Have you seen any evidence of these new additions helping the county financially? Well, Hetex is just under construction, so they probably won't actually go open their doors for operation until November if everything goes well. So they're a ways off. Um, you know, again, that's another uh, situation where the county had property. It was the last five acres in their industrial park in Natural Bridge Station. So we set up a performance agreement with Hetex similar to the brewery. In their case, we, they had 15 employees already. So the performance agreement was to maintain those 15 and add 15 more for a total of 30 jobs in five years. Uh, we know what the tax revenue would be based on machinery and tools, and I don't have that number right off the top of my head. But uh, again, it's a real similar situation, but we really won't be getting anything out of that until they go into production in, in the fall. Uh, they're, really, they're currently located uh, in the regional industrial park in Buena Vista. So all the tax revenue is actually going into a regional pool right now. Some of these new business developments often request broadband. How will the arrival of broadband change the county? Uh, I think it'll really open a door for a lot of businesses, a lot of people. Uh, it'll give a lot of opportunity for working out of your home, call centers. Uh, I think you followed uh, our discussions with Natural Bridge High School and Scott Sayre. And, uh, and in his performance agreement with the county, we're agreeing to take broadband to the building because it's critical for any of the businesses that he's trying to set up in there to have high speed connections. You know, he's working with the uh, Wounded Warrior Program. He'd, uh, they'd like to do call center training for veterans and uh, broadband's critical for any of those kinds of operations. So. Not only that, uh, we want to tie in all the schools and fire and rescue facilities to help with their communication needs and educational training. Uh, I think it's going to really open a door for people. Have there been any developments on the Scott Sayer building? We had a meeting with a number of folks uh, in the last week, just pooling together a lot of different entities to see what interest we can get. Uh, a lot of interest. Uh, a lot of work has to be done to the building. It's, it's not handicap accessible, or I should say marginally mm -hmm. handicap accessible. Um, 
roof leaks, you know, so there are a lot of maintenance things that need to be done, some new construction, uh, and Scott is uh, talking to folks all the time to see what he can put together. This kind of ties in with that. Rockbridge County seems to be particular about what type of industries set up here. What qualities do you look for when trying to attract a new business? Uh, we're really looking for something that has a sort of a minimal footprint and environmental impact. Um, you know, we've had some businesses that have been proposed over the years that folks have been nervous about. Uh, the water bottling plant is probably a really good example that was proposed out at Big Spring and Cars Creek. Uh, Nestle's was the parent company. You know, there was a lot of concern about groundwater withdrawal and what the impact would have in the area out there because so many people are on springs and wells. Uh, unfortunately, that's a project that didn't really get far enough along in the uh, assessment to understand what its full impact could be before they pulled and uh, looked at other areas. Um, you know, traffic generation is a concern, but uh, in this environment, I got to tell you, a lot of those concerns are not at the top of the list right now. Um, you know, the general public is really looking for job creation, better salary opportunities, and tax base. So I'm not going to say that they're, they're not important, but uh, it's a little different environment for the business community right now, and, and you'll see that wherever you go. Mm -hmm, definitely. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for joining us. I'm Finley Merritt for today's on-record portion of the Rockbridge Report.